In today's video, I'll work on a commission featuring Sedona, a gorgeous Australian Shepherd, while chatting about five things I wish I knew before becoming a pet portrait artist. These are lessons I've learned, sometimes the hard way, that would have saved me so much time, stress, and pain. Trust me, by the end of this, you'll have a clearer idea of what it's like to create art that captures the furry members of people's families. It's not just about painting cute pets. Let's start with the biggest surprise. Being a pet portrait artist is about way more than just painting adorable animals. Don't get me wrong, painting dogs with floppy ears or cats with expressive eyes is the best part. But nobody told me how much time I'd spend on everything else. There's client communication, which can range from simple requests to things like can you make my rabbit look 10% happier? And let's not forget marketing yourself, social media posts, writing captions, responding to comments, and staying active online so people actually know you exist. Then there's logistics. Figuring out timelines, invoicing clients, ordering supplies, and shipping. Oh, and don't forget about customer service. Sometimes you'll have to calmly address concerns like this isn't the exact shade of my dog's color. What I wish I knew, you're not just an artist, you're also a business owner, a customer service rep, and sometimes even a problem solver. It's all part of the journey. Not everyone will love your style, and that's okay. When I started, I was obsessed with trying to make everyone happy. I thought, if someone didn't absolutely adore my art, I'd failed as an artist. Spoiler alert, that's not true at all. Art is subjective. Some people will adore your bold, colorful style. Others might prefer hyperrealism or a more minimalist approach. And guess what? That's totally fine. The trick is to find your unique voice as an artist and own it. When you stick to your style, the right clients will find you and they'll choose you because your work speaks to them. The ones who don't vibe with your style they're simply not your audience, and that's perfectly okay. Reference photos can be a nightmare. Let's talk about reference photos. Some clients will send you the most beautiful, high-quality photo of their pet, and you'll think, wow, this is going to be a breeze. Others, well, you might get something taken on a flip phone in 2005. It's important to understand and be empathetic with clients. Sometimes, the photos they provide are all they have, and there's nothing more they can do. As artists, it's our role to at least try to help them. If you truly don't feel confident working with the photos they've provided, it's better to be honest and redirect them to another artist who might be able to meet their needs. This way, you're still offering a solution without compromising the quality of your work or the client's expectations. Being transparent and understanding builds trust, and in the long run, that trust is invaluable to both your reputation and your relationship with clients. What I wish I knew? To ask for better photos, if that is possible, of course. Don't be shy about requesting more references or specific angles. You're not being difficult, you're ensuring you can create your best work. Clients will appreciate your professionalism, for sure. Pricing your work is one of the hardest parts. Ah, uh, pricing. Every artist's favorite topic, right? When I started, I had no clue how to price my work. I'd spend hours on a portrait and charge so little that I was practically paying them to let me paint their dog. What I wish I knew? Your time, skills, and materials have value. Do the math. How long does each piece take? What do your supplies cost? And don't forget to factor in your experience and the fact that you're creating a one-of-a-kind piece. When you charge what you're worth, you'll attract clients who truly value your work. Plus, you'll avoid burnout from working too hard for too little. Pricing is tricky, but trust me, it's a skill you'll get better at with time. You'll get attached to every pet you create. Here's something I didn't expect when I started out you're going to get attached to every single pet you create. Even if you've never met them in real life, 
By the time you finish their portrait, it will feel like they're an old friend. There's this magical thing that happens as you work on every little detail, the tilt of their head, the sparkle in their eyes, or the fluff of their fur. It's like you get to know their personality through the process of painting them. For me, it's not just about creating something that looks like them, it's about capturing who they are. Every time I finish a piece, I find myself smiling, thinking, this is them. This is their spirit. And it's not just my connection to them that makes this work so special. The real magic happens when you share the finished portrait with the client. When you see their face light up or when they get emotional because the artwork has captured something truly meaningful to them, those moments are priceless. It's a reminder of why I do this work in the first place. What I wish I knew before I started, these little furry faces will become just as meaningful to you as they are to the families who love them. Each one leaves a little mark on your heart. It's not just art, it's creating a memory, honoring a bond, and celebrating the love people have for their pets. Honestly, that connection and the joy it brings make this the most rewarding part of being a pet portrait artist. And that's it. Five things I wish I knew before becoming a pet portrait artist. I hope this gives you a clearer picture of what it's like to create art that brings pets to life. If you found this helpful, hit that like button, subscribe for more tips and behind the scenes stories from the art world and let me know in the comments what's one thing you've learned on your creative journey. Thanks for watching and remember, keep creating, keep smiling and give your pets an extra hug for me. See you next time.